Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game with over 100 cards. And 99% of those cards are bad. However, these bad cards still make it into players Edison format decks every single day. Join me as I dive deep into the abyss of bad card design and put these unloved pieces of cardboard to the ultimate test. Three duels against random strangers on the internet. At the end of each episode, we'll reveal each card's place on the cursed tech tier list, ranking them from almost competitive to downright unplayable trash. Will we stumble upon a broken combo, invent a new deck, or will we just go insane at trying to win a duel using Frog the Jam? You will just have to wait and find out. This is Cursed Tech. Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of Cursed Tech. In this episode, we are looking at the best Yu-Gi-Oh card That, that's it, we're, we're looking at the best Yu-Gi-Oh card. Because you already know it's time for Frog the Jam. You saw the intro, it is time to go insane. Look at this, I even got, I even got the sweater on and everything. Frog the Jam came out in a McDonald's Happy Meal pack. I'm not, I'm not joking, a McDonald's, this is a McDonald's card, in 2002. Its text reads, a slime with the head of a frog. It attacks by croaking terribly. And if you want to know the strange history of Frog the Jam, I highly recommend checking out Short Bus Sean's video on the topic. He does a great job. Go subscribe to him. Well but the short version is Frog the Jam has an identity crisis. To be or not to be a frog? That is the question Frog the Jam asks himself every single day. This is because of a translation error with the original Japanese name. The McDonald's people, they didn't know what they were doing. They just gave him a name, Frog, because he looks like a frog, but he's not technically in the frog archetype. Therefore, every single frog card has to exclude poor Frog the Jam from all of their activities. It's like Rudolph, you know? Just let them play in your frog games. It's not that big of a deal. So how are we going to make this level two normal monster work in Edison format? First of all, by croaking terribly. That's definitely gonna happen. But there's a few more extra steps to get there. Here is the plan. The first way to power up our amphibious friend is by giving him the home field advantage. This will be done through a card called Wetlands, which gives all level two or lower aqua monsters 1200 attack. Then we can buff up his recruitment numbers by using a card called the League of Uniform Nomenclature. And finally, you know this frog has ambition. He wants a six figure salary. He wants to exert dominance all over his support he wants to exert dominance over his subordinates, which is why we are going to equip Frog the Jam with Amulet of Ambition. This card means Frog the Jam will never lose in a battle against an opponent's monster. Unless they have a trap card, but they won't they won't have a trap card. So anyway, this is a this is a good plan. This plan is solid plan. It's not gonna make me go insane. Here's the deck list. Behold, my Frog the Jam Edison format deck list. Look at how crazy this, this is the craziest deck I've ever made. <laughs> Look at how awesome this deck is. It was heavily inspired by this list that Keegan showed off on his channel. Uh, someone took it to YCSLA and won a couple side events with it. And the whole idea is that it makes use of this card, the Knight of the Red Lotus. This card is a free special summon if you have three normal monsters in your graveyard and can revive any level four lower normal monster. You can use this card in order to get easy level seven synchros, most likely Black Rose Dragon. But uh, in this deck, we can not only make Black Rose Dragon, but we can also make the Power Tool Dragon. Let me tell you about the card by card. First up, the best Yu-Gi-Oh card ever printed, Frog the Jam. Pay no attention to um this uh his biblical name. This is uh pay no attention. Next up we have Thuru Purun. Purun. A strange one-eyed monster that can fell an enemy with a single stab of its spear. Next up, you can't go wrong with the psychic kappa. I mean look at the look at those hands. Look at that tongue. And you know we've got the water spirit. This is a creepy looking card. This is the creepiest little guy. What is this? What is this card? It's a tuner. 
It's the Aqua. Next up, we got the Knight of the Red Lotus. Then you got the Frog Engine. I've talked about it enough times on this channel. It's good. It's really good. Very good in this deck because all these guys get an extra 1200 attack from Wetland. So this is one of my favorite cards in the deck. Enchanting Fitting Room. This card could summon theoretically four monsters. If the top four cards of your deck are normal monsters, you could summon all four of them. So you know we got to play three of that. It can summon Frog the Jam. And now we have some equip spells to search off of our Power Tool Dragon. Symbols of Duty is great because it can revive any monster in either graveyard by tributing a normal monster. And probably my favorite card in the deck is the Amulet of Ambition. This card turns any of your puny little guys into war machines. It stacks with the wetlands, making your guys into ginormous monsters. And I just love thinking about this guy doing 5,000 attack. Next up, we have Common Charity because we are playing way too many normal monsters. And we have a way to get multiple normal monsters onto the field. The side deck shows off an alternate <laughs> strategy in order to try to OTK, which is extremely fragile and will probably never happen. But, you know, that's Yu-Gi-Oh for you. Let's get into the duels. This first match, we are up against Zombie Hero, and we are going first. So we're just going to normal summon our Thuru Purun. Then we're going to set the League of Uniform Nomenclature, activate Wetlands, and pass. This guy is at a whopping 1650. I repeat, 1650. It's not like you can just normal summon a monster with more attack than 1650 in Edison format, so obviously we are in a very good spot. Our opponent is just going to set a monster and pass their turn. We draw the best card in our deck, the Knight of the Red Lotus. We are then going to go to the main phase and activate the League of Uniform Nomenclature. This will summon out two more Thuru Purun. <laughs> Thuru Purun from the deck. Now, now we're doing some real stuff. We are going to normal summon the Substitute, summon out a Swap Frog from the deck, this Swap Frog is going to activate its effect. This will send a Water Spirit from the deck to the graveyard. We're then going to activate Substitute yet again, summon out another Swap Frog to send another Water Spirit. Then we are going to Special Summon the Knight of the Red Lotus from our hand because we have three normal monsters in the graveyard. We're then going to use Substitute's effect to get another Swap Frog from the deck. This will send a Treeborn Frog. Then we're going to activate Swap Frog's effect to return it to the hand in order to get an extra normal summon of a frog monster this turn we're then going to activate knight of the red lotus bringing back the water spirit and we are going to synchro into a power tool dragon this power tool dragon is going to reveal some equipped spell cards from our deck adding a symbols of duty the symbols of duty will send the Thuru Purun to the graveyard to summon the Knight of the Red Lotus. This Knight of the Red Lotus is going to bring back the Water Spirit yet again, and we can go for a second Power Tool Dragon. We add the Amulet of Ambition to our hand, and then we are going to use our extra normal summon from the Swab Frog that we return to our hand to normal summon a Unifrog. We're then going to go to the battle phase, attack directly for 1600 because this Unifrog is gaining 1200 from the wetlands. Then we're going to attack into this face down with the Substitute. They're going to search their deck for an Infernal Prodigy. We then attack our opponent for 2200 with this Swap Frog, 2300 with this Power Tool Dragon, and the final 2300 for game. It does not get much better than that with this deck. All right, it is time for game number two, and we are going second. Our opponent is going to normal summon a Fossil Dyna, set to back row, and pass their turn. We draw for turn, and it is a dupe frog. We are then going to set that dupe frog, and then pass the turn back to our opponent. Our opponent is going to activate Reinforcement of the Army in order to get a Dark Greffer from their deck to their hand. They're then going to normal summon an Elemental Hero Stratos. This will let them search their deck for a Malicious. They then go into the battle phase, attack into our dupe frog, taking it 200 damage. They are then going to pass the turn back to us, and we draw a great card, the Knight of the Red Lotus. We are then going to normal summon Thu... <laughs> Thuru Purun. <laughs> we normal summon Thuru Purun, and we... he I mean, look at this guy. He's got a single jab of his spear. He looks ambitious to me. We're going to power him up. And this guy, he can just attack over the Fossil Dyna. He gains a thousand attack points, so he goes up to 1450, and 
and we pass the turn to our opponent. Our opponent normal summons a Dark Refer, activates the effect, discarding a Malicious. They're going to send a Plague Spreader from their deck to the graveyard, activate that Plague Spreader, returning a card from their hand to the top of their deck. Then they're going to use that Plague Spreader and the Stratos in order to make a Bryonic. They activate the Bryonic, discarding a card in order to bounce, I'm not joking, the Amulet of Ambition. Anyway, he attacks into our Dupe Frog. Our Dupe Frog will activate its effect in order to add a Swap Frog from our deck to our hand. And then he's going to clear our Ambitious Thuru Run. Then he passes his turn. What else is he going to do? This is going to be a good turn for us. We're going to special summon this swap frog from our hand, discarding a psychic kappa. This will send a water spirit from our deck to the graveyard. We're then going to use swap frog in order to bounce it to our hand. Now that we have three normal monsters in the graveyard, we are going to special summon Knight of the Red Lotus. We call priority in order to special summon out this water spirit. And then we can go into a level 7 Synchro and Black Rose Dragon. Our opponent has the Solemn Judgment, but this is no problem for us because we have some more plays. Also, pay attention to their life points. 38, 25. Life points are going to be very funny in the rest of this game. We are then going to Special Summon Swap Frog from our hand, discarding the Substitute, sending a Treeborn Frog from our deck to the graveyard. We then normal summon this substitute and call priority in order to summon out a frog from our deck. We're then going to summon Swap Frog, do some substitute shenanigans, you know, we get a bunch of guys. From the deck, we are going to end on a Dupe Frog and a Unifrog. We are then going to activate Enchanted Fitting Room now that we have cleared our deck of a lot of random frog monsters. And thankfully for us, this mills two more Duru Poo Runs. I mean... I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good if you ask me. We're then going to equip this Amulet of Ambition that our opponent foolishly returned to our hand to the Thuru Purun and attack into our opponent's Brionic. There is a four level difference. So in the damage step, this card will gain 2,000 attack going up to 2,450. We're then going to attack with Unifrog dealing 400 damage and because we have a dupe frog we can pop his back row and then we just pass our turn i mean what if what a powerful turn from the normal monster deck our opponent is then going to activate soul release but um buddy the problem is this through puran on the field you think we care about treeborn frog we can't even bring treeborn frog back our opponent tries to attack into our unifrog but unfortunately we have dupe frog so he has to attack this card first he's then gonna just pass his turn we draw a Water Spirit, which is not a bad card to draw at all. We're then going to Normal Summon the Water Spirit and Synchro three monsters into a Magical Android. This will let us clear this Dark Refer and get in for, I repeat, 400, 450 damage. Our opponent is sitting at a clean 2,125, and we also gain 600 life points in the end phase. They draw... Probably the best card in their deck, the Miracle Fusion. They're going to summon out an Absolute Zero and attack over our Dupe Frog. This will let us add a Swap Frog from our graveyard to our hand. We draw an MST for turn. We are then going to activate MST on the back row. It was a Torrential. Go into the battle phase. We can attack into our opponent's monster with Uru Purun. And it will have 3,450 attack because there is a 6 level difference. This is the best duel of my life, I think. This is this is a this is a good duel. Our opponent drops down to 1175 life points and then we just decide to pass our turn. Our opponent draws, they set one back row and then pass the turn to us. We normal summon a swap frog, go to the battle phase, attack our opponent for 1000 and they have 175 life points. They're going to set one more back row and pass the turn. We draw a Psychic Kappa. I mean, I really wish that was Frog the Jam, but sometimes you're not that lucky. We're going to normal summon the Psychic Kappa, go to the battle phase, attack for game. Just kidding. They have returned from the different dimension, which is going to drop our opponent to, I repeat, 88 life. They have 88 life points. My opponent has 88 life points. And then we can't do anything else, so we just, we just pass the turn. <laughs> My opponent draws for turn and admits defeat. I know I don't normally interrupt mid-duel, but um, what you guys just saw was the second game I played with the deck, and I was I was feeling good. I mean, it was an interesting game. I won, 
showed off the deck, it was very cool. And then I'm just thinking, okay, all I need to do now is win the game using Frog the Jam, because he didn't actually win the game. So then I tried a bit more, and I started losing. And I, I kept losing, and losing, and losing. Not like this. Not like this, come on. Not like this. Okay, I run, st I run 12 normal monsters. All I need to do is just draw, just draw one normal monster. I just kept losing. Yes, I summoned three Frog the Jams. I attacked my opponent directly. And they are very much still alive. They are, they are alive. And they weren't even close. They were never, I was never close to winning with Frog the Jam. Look at this, I lost to Berserk Dragon. I played against Berserk, I played against my own deck and I lost. And no matter what I did, I couldn't win with Frog the Jam. I, I tried, I, I tried for days. And after every single game, I got a little bit more frustrated and a little bit more upset and a little bit more angry. And I realized that the intro is divine prophecy. Or will we just go insane trying to win a duel using Frog the Jam? There's nothing I could do. It was going to make me go insane no matter what. I was never going to win with Frog the Jam. I was always going to go insane. I was always gonna go insane. And do you wanna know how many games I lost? Just just guess. 24. 24. I lost I lost 24 times in a row. Do you know how much do you know how much time that is? 24 games in a row. I can't I, I can't do it. I can't win with Frog the Jam. I tried. I tried everything. We're we're going to the tier list. Forget the rest of the games. The video's over. Frog the Jam is the best Yu-Gi-Oh card. We have established that. It is the best Yu-Gi-Oh card. But, is it good in Edison format? Yes. I just couldn't make it work. That doesn't mean he's not good. It just means that I personally couldn't make it work. And that's my own fault. That is not the fault of Frog the Jam. Frog the Jam did nothing wrong. We're gonna put him in the small possibility of doing anything. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. So yeah, 24 games in a row, not every episode can be Montage Dragon. Thank you guys for watching, and um, I'm gonna go smash my head into a wall. All they need to do is pass. All they need to do is, let's go. Okay, we activate the League of Uniform Nomenclature, summoning out two more Frog the Jams from the deck. Then we are going to draw for turn. Then we activate Delta Attacker. All the Frog the Jams can attack directly. Then we activate Thousand Energy, giving them an extra thousand attack. They are each at 2,900 attack. Attacking directly is game. Let's, let's go. We, we won. We won with Frog the Jam. It's over. It's over. Oh my, oh, okay. What am I doing with my life? Oh my god.